Hello, I want to show you how to use this projectile motion FET. The first thing you'll do is pick intro. Notice we have a cannon 10 meters off the ground. That's perfect. The cannon is at zero degrees. We can adjust it, but the first questions are about when the cannon is fired horizontally. Um, you're really not going to touch this tool until later on. You're going to change the mass. You leave that alone. Definitely don't click on air resistance at the beginning. That comes later. I'm going to click on components and leave these unchecked. You've got a target 15 meters over. And um, here's, your, here's the button you click to launch the projectile. Uh, here's how you adjust the speed. You can do small adjustments this way. And you can actually make big adjustments this way. This is pause. I want you to put this on slow. That'll help you with a lot of the questions if it's on slow. This is a refresh button. Bring everything you know, back to normal. Um, one of the you know, most important tools here is this over here. If you wanted to find the time, range, and height of any point, especially the collision point, you click over here. Once you get in the crosshairs, uh, yeah, you can see you get a change right there on the crosshair. You can tell see that it took 1.43 seconds to hit the ground. This range is 21.42. It's got no height. That's no vertical height. Uh, but if I want to see what you know what's happening at this point, notice it turns yellow, and we could see that where this is where the ball was one second uh, into its flight. It had traveled. Look, you could see it traveled at the target. It didn't hit the target, but it, at that point it was 50, it had a horizontal range of 15 meters. Its height was 5.1. Um, here's the clear button to erase what you've done, and uh, that's basically it. I, you don't have to mess with this at all. Um, let's, let me show you if you're trying to hit the 15 meter target, you can uh, obviously play around this way. We've got to go a little less. Let's launch it, and uh, no, not quite there. So we're gonna erase and try to get a little lower. And little by little, we'll get closer to the target launch. Part of this, part of this lab is is um, hitting this target on the bottom. And look at this. Actually, this is another thing I can show you. You can move the target. Let's put the target back to ten. Basically, all this stuff is click and drag. Now we'll put it at fifteen. I think that's what it was originally at fifteen. And uh, let's try again. That's way too slow. We'll erase. And we'll bring it up. Okay. And you get the idea. Now here's, actually, let me show you something else. Now that's hit the target, but it didn't hit the bullseye. So maybe we'll just click it a little more. Erase. And so when I talk about hitting a target, I mean, like, right in the middle there. And, well, it's not quite it. So go backwards. Sometimes you, you know, there's no speed. That yeah, in this case, you're not going to get any velocity that will exactly hit the target. Um, I'll probably give you targets that you can hit exactly. Um, don't big first of all, don't mess with it. You can change this, but I, I believe I, the entire ex first experiment's at 10 meters. But you can actually click and drag and change this. I'm going to play around a little bit. Um, I think that's it for this part. Let, let's go to vectors. What, what, what you should, now you can change the angle here. You can see that it, it's reported over here. We've got a target again that's movable. I'm suggesting to go, use the slow. This is your measuring device. And um, worthwhile to see this again. Um, I have air resistance on, so that is not what I want on. So I can just remove it, clear it. I think there is a point later on where you have to do, use the air resistance, but not in the beginning. I'll put velocity vectors on. That's right. I think in this one, I ask you to put the velocity vectors, and we can click it again. You can see, ooh, actually, that's not good. Let's pause this. Go to slow. Let's clear it. Actually, not velocity vectors. I want to put components on. So this, you'll see this a lot better, I think. 
But you can see with, let's watch it, you can see the, hmm. okay. Uh, velocity vectors, yeah, okay, velocity vectors. So it should be components, velocity vectors. Let's clean it up and try it again. Yeah, that's better. So because I want you to see the, come on, hit play. I want you to see is the, the horizontal component and the vertical component. You can see the vertical component going to zero. Let's get this out of the way. And um, let's do it again. This is pretty cool, I think. So the vertical component goes to zero, but the horizontal vo velocity, no surprise, no air resistance, the horizontal velocity doesn't change. And remember this little thing, we get into the crosshairs. Let's see if we can find a peak. Uh, well, actually, this only gives you the time. So to, to get to the peak, it took one point, uh, see how it turned green? 1.59 seconds to get to the peak. And I'm sure you know, and I hope you know, that the peak time is half the, the total time in the air. So this is a little more fun. You, this is, uh, you can, we can adjust the angle and see if we get a bigger range. Let's try this and see if we get a bigger range. I bet you know already that we probably will get a bigger range because it's close to that magic number. And um, I think that's all you need to know to have fun with this. Let's go, let's find out the range over here. See how this turned yellow? So this range was 28.6, and this is better. We'll put it over here, and this is why you can't see that. Uh, I think that's all you need to know about. You just heard my dog. Stop this now. That's it. Good luck.